and welcome to Needle Felting with Lincolnshire Fen Crafts. Welcome to another tutorial. Today we are going to be making these really simple hearts and pom-poms. I'm not going to use a cookie cutter, although I love cookie cutters. Um, I'm doing it this way because I want you to see how easy it is to create these shapes freehand which also allows you to make any size or shape you wish. So what I've done here is I have created this lovely sort of topiary style decoration in a little terracotta pot and I've done the same here. So that one is on um, a barbecue stick with the, the two hearts and the pom-pom at the base, a little bit of core wool in there covered by the, the green wool and then the barbecue stick just plonked down the center. And then with this one, I've just threaded everything onto a wire. So this is floristry wire. Felted that, created this arch, and then stuck the arch to the side of this little miniature terracotta pot so it keeps it nice and stable. So they're really easy to make. And then in addition, I have made this gorgeous hearts and pom-poms and tassel garland, which you can see here. Again, same way of making the hearts, the pom-poms I will show you after we've made the hearts. And again, a beautiful decoration. Now, if you didn't want to go with the traditional sort of pink and white and you wanted more of a spring theme, then you could choose different colours for whatever theme you're using. So I've got a really nice yellow here, this beautiful sort of soft yellow and a green, so lovely spring colours. And these are perfect for all sorts of things. They're great for, for decorating a, a kid's room. But also imagine if you are having a party or a wedding and you want to have handmade decorations. Imagine these on the tables in your actual colour theme for your party or wedding. They would just look amazing. Just the little topiary additions or the beautiful garlands sort of adorning the tables or the top table even if it's a wedding you could have those along the front there's so much you could do with them but they are so easy to make so I'm going to show you first how to create a beautiful needle felted heart now the wool's quite important to get this look because you want a nice soft easy to shape heart and I am using carded batting and carded batting is, is wool that's kind of slightly it's felted, but it's in, in flat sort of lofty sheets. And when you pull it, you know, you'll, you'll be able to sort of split it into two layers. I'm keeping it just as, as, as it came. So this is a carded batting sheet. And the difference between carded batting and wool tops or roving, as you may also know, it, is just the, the way that it's processed. So carded wool is brushed in lots of different directions and the wool tops that I use for the pom-poms are long lengths of wool all brushed in the same direction. You don't need much, you need a felting mat, it can be a foam mat that I'm using here, always make sure you use a topper, uh, will save you um, a fortune in mats um, and also much better for the environment because you're not replacing them all the time or you can also use a rice mat with a topper on. Any mat that you've got that works for you is absolutely fine. You only need one needle for this, although you can use a multi-tool to speed it up, but you only need one needle. And I am using, this is a 38, sort of what I call a standard good all-rounder needle. And it's quite robust, so breaks much less easily than the, the finer needles and is quicker to felt. And you could also use a 36 for this as well, which would be perfect. I put the 38s in most of my needle felting kits. It's, it's, it's my sort of go-to needle if um, you, know, you can create a project from start to finish with this. So that's it. Let's get going. Hearts are super easy. What you are going to do is you're going to create a simple petal shape. You're going to draw a petal shape with your felting needle. Now, I might have a little bit too much wool here, so I'm just going to pull a little bit of that away. Because what's going to happen is we're going to draw this shape and then we're going to pull all our wool towards the centre to create the heart shape. But to do that, we just create a very simple sort of petal teardrop shape to start with. 
and the key is in just a simple shape and then once we've felted it and it's got nice and firm we then actually start to create this heart shape so off we go so lay your your card i mean you can use carded wool as well carded wool lengths lay the, lay them on your mat take your felting needle and then just draw a rough teardrop sort of petal shape not a heart shape so we've got this nice curve going around here can you see that and there we go we've got a line to work from and then what we do is we pull in the wall towards the center and when you feel resistance that is the line that you've created you then felt that in and you pull around now I've got quite a lot of excess wool here so I'm going to take some of that as I come around but I do want a nice sort of um, fluffy lofty heart for the effect so just bring that in and can you see we're just pulling it to there and feeling that resistance and I'm just going to take some of this wool away and that's the other great thing about using carded wool for this is because it's in short fibres, it just pulls off really easily without tugging on your work. So bring that in. Continue to bring it all towards the centre. And, in, and doing it this way means we have a really nice soft edge, which is exactly what we want. Bring that in down towards the bottom where it will start to narrow use your hand keep those fingers out of the way of the needle and I've got quite a lot of wool here so I'm just going to pull a little bit more off there and just bring that in and then pull that with your needle towards the center and this is a really rough shape at the moment. We're just getting the bones of it together. And then pull it away from the mat before you continue to felt. And so that looks really odd at the moment. Bring your needle to the side and just start to bring those edges in. You see, because it's nice and soft and lofty, we can really sort of work on that shape. And then really sort of start to, to speed up. If you wanted to use a multi-tool, you could. I've got this um, wooden felting needle holder here, which has three needles. You can take one out and use it as two needles or just one if you want something that's nice and chunky. If you um, have de any dexterity problems with your hands, these are really comfortable to work with. And I've got fine needles in here. Because I'm using three, I don't want it to ruin the shape. So I've put finer needles in here and these are size 40s. And that will quickly, quite like that, green against the the raspberry here and then turn that again and you see this side because we've been felt on the other side this side is nice and smooth and then the other side will be smooth as well because we're going to push that wall through so each time you're improving and firming that shape and keep that going There we go and again so as I said single needle is absolutely fine but I'm just speeding it up with this so you're not getting bored with me using the one needle and taking more time than I need to but if you haven't got that you don't need a multi-tool you can also just tape two felting needles together and use those so I'm going to go back to my single needle now and I'm going to start to shape this heart. So what I'm going to do is these edges, I'm just going to bring them in. I'm going to leave that because that's the kind of shape that I want, but I'm just going to make sure that it's really 
nicely rounded and curved getting the shape that I want go diagonally down the sides if you go diagonally can you see how that's pushing those sides in and this is definitely sort of a soft heart we don't want something that's overly felted and you can absolutely use wool tops for this which I have done on many occasions depending on what wool you've got any wool will do but I just like this carded batting for this particular project can you see now how we are starting to to bring this shape in and you can use your fingers as well but once it gets a bit firmer we'll use those a little bit more so now what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to I want this point at the bottom of the heart so I'm really going to start working on that shape now I've got a little bit of a, a sort of raw uneven edge here so I'm just going to bring that over with my needle just over the edges so that starts to soften and become more even and see how that is starting to shape nicely I'm just going to work around this heart again just keep it moving you don't want to flatten any particular area and that is coming together nicely so again I'm going to narrow this base I'm not creating the the main heart shape just yet come back to that in a moment I'm just it doesn't matter but it doesn't actually matter which way around you do this you can start at the top or the bottom and that firms up those edges as well and can you see how that is beginning to work and the firmer it gets the easier it will be to create shapes with your fingers as well so I'm aiming to get this to more of a sort of pointy shape at the bottom now you what you what you could do if you're worried about um, stabbing yourself use finger guards if you feel you need to but what you can also do is I've got a piece of cardboard here and you can just pop that in the cardboard to protect your fingers squeeze it quite tightly and then just felt along the cardboard and the cardboard will will not break your needle so if you're feeling a bit apprehensive and worried about actually catching your fingers then use the cardboard you can do this for, use this um, for all sorts of projects especially if you're doing like um, flat bunny ears and those kind of things tails And that gives you also a really nice neat edge you see that and then you turn it around and do the other side you can get fancy leather ones for this i had a lovely one given to me as a gift but all you need really is a little bit of cardboard just to hold it You see how that's starting to shape now cardboard off there and then I'm going to work back up here and around and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to create this this proper sort of heart shape here now you can have it symmetrical you can have it off to one side as I have here entirely up to you so I'm just going to go for the center and see where I end up probably off center but it won't matter so I'm again and put my fingers here keep your fingers flat like so and then keep your needle flat and just push in the same place over and over just work up and down in the same place in the same spot and you see how that heart's now starting to take shape and it's so easy and then flip that over do the same on the other side because you want it to look as good on the back as it does the front see 
see how that's coming along now I'm going to just push that along a little bit further because I want it a little bit deeper there we go come back to the front or the back I'm not sure which will be which just yet but you want a really defined shape see how that's coming along nicely now and then we're just going to work this shape again I'll come back to that in a minute but we're just going to continue to create our nice heart shape and we're just going through the surface here now we're not pushing all the way in we're just it's just the surface shape that we are working on go diagonally And then again, I'm going to come back here and really push through this gap here to emphasize it. See how that's coming along nicely now and make sure again you go to the other side. Want it nice and even. And you know just keep going until you're happy with that that shape it's entirely up to you it doesn't have to be perfect either and if you've got any ridges as well you can just use your needle just to sort of scrape that wool for a really smooth bit of cardboard in there still smooth finish but those are things that you can do once we've got to the, the end of it. And then what I really want to do is I want to sort of curve this side. You see how I want to curve that? So all I'm going to do here is I'm going to focus on a little area, pushing straight in, fingers to the side again. And that way you'll protect yourself. And then other side, I'm going to come down here, be very careful with your fingers. Again, you can use finger guards for this if you're feeling a bit anxious about poking yourself with a needle. I'm used to it, it doesn't bother me, it's sort of water off a duck's back now, but some people's pain threshold and tolerance is, is a lot less than mine. I've just kind of got used to it. There we go. So can you see how that's really shaping? And now because it's firming, you can actually start to use your fingers and nip and squeeze. And look at that. That's already pretty much done. Beautifully shaped. And once you've done one and you've got used to the technique, which is very simple, you can fly along with these make them as big or as small as you wish and then just go around the edges and use your felting needle because we want both sides to be really neat and as you can see on this side we've got some slight lumpy lines I mean they're barely visible but I like to get rid of them if I can so if you just push through from one side what you're doing is you're pushing the wool through to where those little lines and ridges are and they're all disappearing so just work that around like that and then i think i just want to narrow this a little bit more and have more curve here So there you go that's that's really all you need to know about how to create a free-handed shaped heart and again cookie cutters are brilliant I use them I love them but what this does is it allows you to create any size shape design that you wish 
and again I'm just using that needle just to tease that wool over just to neaten it go through from this side and there we go and there's a little bit of fuzz around the edges I mean tiny tiny amount and I wouldn't be bothered by that at all but if you really want to neaten it then use a pair of small sharp scissors just keep them flat to the heart but don't cut into the actual heart itself you're just getting those wisps but generally I wouldn't bother and there you go and again final detail is is done and then as I said you can use the barbecue stick and create these really easy toperies that look really beautiful. You could put them in um, teacups as well. If you don't have the terracotta pots, you could put them in teacups or you could um, glue them to wooden bases. And again, this one here is just a variation on the theme. So that is our heart done and finished. So I hope you found that super easy. And now we'll move on to our pom-poms. Now pom-poms are really easy to make as you probably most um, of you know um, and instead of using yarn I'm actually going to use felting wool because what it does is it gives this gorgeous soft sort of really fluffy finish and you've probably got wool tops or something similar lying around. Now you can Use a traditional pom-pom maker, you can make one of your own using the cardboard, but these, I like, I love these little um, pom-pom makers. They are so easy to use once you've done your first one. And what they do is they, they come like so, these little plastic things, and they actually, they actually pull apart once you've cut your pom-pom. So what you do is you open your pom-pom maker up if you're using these. And that's how it opens up. And then all you do is you take a thin strip of your wool top. Might just thin that out a little bit more. And you just hold that section there, which is in two parts. And you'll see why in a moment. And you just pop your wool top on there hold with your finger and then just start to wrap around the pom-pom maker and as you can see you take it right up to the edges it doesn't need to be too thick don't overlap these edges just pull it around and keep this wool nice and flat as you do so and you're just basically filling in the gaps as you would any other pom-pom maker bring that round again thicken it up a little bit and just and just sort of fill that it can be as thick or as thin as you want but make sure you've got a nice amount of wool on there and that's it so you pop that into the center and then you turn the other side around and you do exactly the same thing again so I'm going to just pull a strip Of wool off and this is probably a bit thinner than the other side but I'm really not bothered about that it doesn't matter and just if you want you can twizzle the end just to mat it a little bit and just hold it there and don't worry about any loose ends because they're all going to be trimmed later and just start and wrap that around and it's so easy using these just make sure you don't get anything caught over here because it makes it difficult when you come to trim it and if you run out of wool you can just add add more it doesn't really matter I've probably been a bit tight with this this wool so I might need to use yeah I'm going to use some more so I'm just going to rub that on with my fingers and it will hold so I'm just going to pop that where the gap is and just go over Come round, keep it moving, and that's it. 
and as you can see make sure these areas are nice and free and then pop that into the center and there you go so then the next step is just to simply trim so you can see there's a there's a gap so we've got it's in two parts and there's a gap so what you do is you cut through that gap use your needle to find where the the plastic is underneath and just trim away just snip that and it will still stay it within the holder go to the other side do exactly the same start there hold that down just poke your needle uh, your scissors in and just use the base to rest them on as you work around and make sure you snip off everything go back if you need to and there we go so now you can see this is all open and free now before we do anything all I'm going to do is because we want to hold it and secure it I am going to take some wool top you can use yarn if you want and I'm just going to pull that down the center through to this side pull it tight keep your hands close to it so you don't pull the wool away and I'm just going to tie that as you would if you're using just your typical wool yarn and then pull that tight until it actually you can feel that it stops it wants to go right to the center because it wants to hold that pom-pom nice and secure and if you want you can do that again and leave that loose end on because I will show you how it can be useful when you're making your garland and then just make sure there's no wool caught anywhere then all we're going to do is we are going to open up these arms to release the pom-pom and then just gently pull it apart and then it's in two halves and then we can see here we have our pom-pom which looks really sort of oddly shaped at the moment but just give it a really good waggle in your hand and then you can see how that shape's formed now i quite like them nice and dense as you can see this one i used a bigger pom-pom maker for that one so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to get my mat actually my topper here so I can clear the mess once I've trimmed it so I'm just going to go around and I'm just going to start cutting into it and don't be frightened of cutting quite a lot out because if you want a nice dense pom-pom and these will all be teased over you want to take quite a bit off if you like it loose then you can just trim it to shape and then give it another shake and that will show you where your sort of uneven areas are and where bits are sticking out and take your time when doing this I'm rushing this a bit so it won't be perfect but do take your time because it's 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 worth it this is the this is the important bit really this is how you get these lovely dense pom-poms and the closer you go to the center the sort of thicker it becomes and you can just use your fingers to cover up those gaps and then give it another shake you can see that pom-poms really coming along nicely now and then I'm just sort of holding that to the light and just tidying it all up and that is how you do your pom-poms there we go and they're so beautiful and they're so easy to make and like I said you know I've used these on the 
the little wire frame topiary here. I've done a bigger one for the heart topiary on the stick. And then on the actual garland, what I've done is I've, I've made lots of pom-poms and several hearts. And what I've actually done here is I've kept that loose um, piece of wool and I've actually felted that into the center of that heart there. No sewing needed at all. And I've just pushed that in with the needle from the pom-pom. And then here I've got this beautiful, this is bright white sort of bio nylon and it's just gorgeous white color. And what I've done is I've just tied it in a knot around the yarn that I've used to create the length of the garland. And that is it. That is how easy it is and so effective. And like I said, you know, pink and white and uh, very traditional, um, obviously perfect for Valentine's Day, but equally gorgeous in uh, your know, kids' rooms, your bedroom and um, for displays, parties, weddings, you can choose whatever colour theme you wish. So I hope you got a lot out of that. I really enjoyed it. And um, join me again for the next tutorial. Bye. Thank you.